Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Saturday night, not a simulcast show, not a simulcast show but it is a live show. We have thoroughbred racing action for you from Delaware Park on this Saturday, June the 9th. And of course, it is Belmont Stakes Day. The Belmont Stakes will be wrapping things up there on the show. And of course, lots of action today because of the parlay wagering, not the parlay wagering, the regular wagering sports wagering just started this week on Tuesday at Delaware Park. So we've got a lot of action going on. People are betting baseball games, uh, betting uh, upcoming soccer matches, and you name it. They're, they're betting it today. The sports wagering combined with the Belmont crowd makes it a very hectic day and a very nice day to watch all the fans enjoy themselves here at Delaware Park. But we did have nine live races. Let's get started with race number one. It is on the main oval, going six furlongs. We were fast and firm today for our two turf races. Here is your opener on a field of six went poster, the favorite, the six patriotic heart for trainer Dale Capuano. Let's watch. And they're off. Soft landing, the long shot breaks well, goes right for that lead. Quickly, on the move, there goes Haley's Thunder, set the challenge as they make their way down the back stretch. Up on the outside, it's Cuckoo for Coconuts and Patriotic Heart is four wide down the backside. Then a Capitula Misdriven and Spenders at the back. As they approach the half mile marker, it's Haley's Thunder now edging away by three parts of a length. Patriotic Heart moves up on the outside still, three wide into the turn with the rail soft landing in between horses, Cuckoo for Coconuts. Left and half to Misdriven and Spender continues the trail, but only about four and a half lengths separates the field with three eights to go. Haley's Thunder on the outside, soft landings hanging in on the inside. Patriotic Heart is going evenly in third. Then a gap of two lengths to Cuckoo for Coconuts with a quarter to go. Haley's Thunder, soft landings not thrown in the towel, trying to battle back on the inside. Patriotic Heart is under a drive, splitting horses. Cuckoo for Coconuts, late run from Miss Driven with a furlong to go. It's still wide open. Haley's Thunder trying to hold on. Cuckoo for Coconuts on the inside, soft landing. Miss Driven's putting in the run on the far outside. Haley's Thunder, Cuckoo for Coconuts. Here comes Coconuts on the outside. Cuckoo for Coconuts wins it. Haley's Thunder second. Cuckoo for Coconuts takes the opener for trainer Elizabeth Brand, who just had a winner the other day, so she's off to a pretty good start, as is winning jockey Kai Barcoa. He's racking up the W's early on. Winner returned 23.60 in the upset there. 680-340. Second, the two Haley's Thunder for Cedeno. Three even 220. And third was the four misdriven. Jeremy Rose back riding her Delaware Park. Good to see Jeremy back in the saddle here. 3-2 exact to $68. 3-2-4 in the try. Return 339.80. Dollar super with a six. 427.30. We turn now to race number two. This one is a two-turn event going one mile. They start right in front of us here. We have a field of seven going post foot in here. Slight favorite was the six. She's a sassy lady for Trenton Gerald Bennett. Sauce is in, we're set. And they're off. Looked like the five. Miss Maryland got away awkwardly there from the gate. Toward the outside, it's She's a Sassy Lady and Salsa River Girl vying for that lead into that first turn. They'll both cross over in front of the rest of them. Down to the inside, Patty's got Rosie saving all the ground. Love that fountain between horses. Tis the Maze and Patriot up there three wide. Then a gap of two and a half to Gem of the Ocean. And the sluggish starter there, Miss Maryland, has moved up to the inside of that one. As they make their way around the first turn, opening quarter goes in 24 and 4. And on the front end, it's She's a Sassy Lady leading it by a half. Salsa River Girls right there now applying some pressure on the outside second. Then a gap of over two and a half lengths further back to Tis Amazing Patriot toward the inside. It is Love That Fountain and with the rail, Patty's Gal Rosie. Then comes Miss Maryland far back. Gem of the Ocean begins to fade from the scene. Half goes in 49 and two as they race into the turn. She's a sassy lady, opens up now, has it by about two and a half lengths. Salsa River Girl couldn't quite keep pace in second toward the inside, Patty's Gal Rosie. Tis Demaze and Patriot moving up three wide now trying to make a run. Then we drop back five lengths to Love That Fountain, followed by Miss Marilyn and Gem of the Ocean is out of it. Around the bend they go. She's a sassy lady to catch. She cuts the six furlongs in one fourteen and four as they turn for home. She's a sassy lady in front by four, four and a half lengths. On the move in the second, Tis the Maze and Patriot has a shot in second, followed by Patty's Gal Rosie in third, but a furlong to go, and she's a sassy lady, is holding sway. She's a sassy lady, and Angel Suarez will win this one by about four or five. Tis the Maze and Patriot getting second, Patty's Gal Rosie third, looks like love that. She's a sassy lady wins this one for Trenton Gerald Bennett. 
He uh, was very successful down at Tampa. And the year he was here at Delaware Park a couple of years ago, did very well. He will be one of the contenders, I believe, for leading trainer of this meet there. Angel Suarez is off to a good start also here at Delaware Park. On board, the winner returns 680-362-60. Second to three, tis the amazing patriot for Shannonuski, 520-380. And third one's the one, Patty's Galrosi, three even. 6-3 exact to $33. 631 one on the try, 135.40. Your dollar super with the two, 298.10. And the three six double comes back $95.40. We move on to race number three today. This one kicks off the 50 cent pick five. Now we usually have a couple of pick fours, starting with the first race and the fifth race and the pick five. Sequences races three through seven, and usually get a couple turf races in there, so you get some chances to get some good prices in that sequence. We start with race number three. We have three scratches, and here's scratch the three, six, and the seven, and that leaves us with a field of six going five and a half furlongs in here. The uh, almost odds on choice was the five. We were kings for David Jacobson, sending this one down from New York with Carol Cedeno in the saddle. And they're off. Town of Towns breaks well with that Charlestown speed. Quickly goes to the front. Cowboy King up on the outside, racing second toward the inside. Gaelic Man is on the move. The challenge for that spot. Then comes next in line up on the outside. We were Kings down toward the inside. That Sevy in the trailer is Wild Man. They've got a half mile to go, and Town of Towns on the front end, still by length over Cowboy King. Followed by We Were Kings moving up on the outside. The Kings going after Town of Towns as they race into the turn. It's over two lengths out of Gaelic Man. Followed by Sevy moving up alongside. To the trailer is still Wild Man. Around the bend they go. There goes We Were Kings up on the outside to take a lead. Town of Towns trying to battle back to the inside. Cowboy King is getting out around the bend as they turn for home. On the front end, it's We Were Kings and Town of Towns battling back gamely on the inside. Then a gap of three lengths further back on the rail. Gailey Man rallies. We'll need some racing room on the far outside. Sevy. It is still We Were Kings and Town of Towns. We Were Kings, late run from Sevy charging in the second, but We Were Kings wins it. Crown the five Sevy horse, We Sevy. Were Kings. David Jacobson dropping in this, this one down from New York and getting the W with Carol Cedeno in the saddle, returning 463, even 260. Second, the two, Sevy, 764, 40. And third was the Charlestown Chipper, Town of Towns, 320. Your 5 2 exact to 3780, 5 2 8 try, 231, 40. The double return 1920. Pick three, 16190. And that super with the one. We like that one on the fourth spot. Return $283.40. On to race number four. This is a six furlong allowance event for fillers and mayors, three year olds and up, which have never won ace other than maiden claiming or starter, or which have never won two races or optional claiming. You got a lot of choices in here. Only one horse, only one horse in here running for the tag. That was the one burn control, who was the heavy favorite in here. Here is the race, scratch the five, left us with a field of five. And they're off. Pretty even start for them all. There goes Afar, quickest away, and the long shot quickly opens up two and a half lengths on the field. Afar leading them down the back stretch by about two and a half. Royalty for Life is now tugging to the bit as Afar, the jockey standing up in the saddle right now, looks like he's trying to get out. Not sure what's going on with Afar, I'm not sure he might have lost his stirrups, but he's standing up on the two and quickly is beginning to fade from the scene on the outside. As they make their way to the turn, Royalty for Life leads it by a length and a half. Raining Gal racing in second, followed by Swimsuit Issue and Burn Control, once again afar, is out of the race as they race into the turn. Royalty for Life, well in hand, still leads it by a length and a half. Up on the outside, Swimsuit Issue is making a run down to the inside. Raining Gal still right there. And Burn Control, only about three and a half lengths separates the foursome as they hit the top of the stretch. And Royalty for Life still going strong. Hasn't really been let out yet. Royalty for Life leads it now by two, two and a half over Raining Gal. Swimsuit Issue and Burn Control for long to go. This is all Royalty for Life. And Shannon Uski now striding away nicely. She'll win this as, by about as much as she wants to right now. Shannon Uski and Royalty for Life wins it by six. Swimsuit Easy issue. score for the Tampa Invader. Royalty for Life broke her maiden at Tampa last out impressively by six lengths. Comes right back here in an allowance race and does it again for trainer Robert Raymond and winning jockey Sharon Uski. And the winner returns $6.20 and looks like she's got a nice career ahead of her. Second was the three swimsuit issue returning 260 and 240. And third, the four reigning gal 540. Winning exact is six and three, 1640. Your six, three, four try, 10240. 
The double, 5 6 return 26 20. Dollar pick three, $73.30. And there was a pick four, no super, with the five force field. The early pick four returned $675 for the dollar payout. Now we're going to the turf for race number five. We like to see those turf races. We usually get full fields, and we do here. The turf is labeled firm today. This is the about distance, a mile and 70 yards. The rail still out some 25 feet right now. In here, scratch the four. Left us with a field of nine, a wide open betting event. And getting a lot of action at the end here was the 11 Valiant Reason trying the turf for the first time for trainer Michael Matz. And they're off. Down to the inside, lost scroll away well. Flamingo Chick is there with Wee Bonnie Lass. Up on the outside looking for a spot is far outside, running tide. I'll make that valiant reason. Also between horses, speak for yourself. We've got about four across the track into that first turn. Lost Scroll is there with Flamingo Chick. Getting out a bit around the bend is Flamingo Chick getting the worst of it. Speak for yourself and now angling to the inside. That was Valiant Reason who saved some ground around that bend. Then a gap of three to Wee Bonnie Lass. Two and a half lengths further back to Way Waltz and Demelza. Then comes Telling Me Softly. La Mamba has one beat, and that's running tide. Opening quarter went in 23. Good solid tempo being set by Lost Scroll as they make their way down the back stretch. Leads it by a length. Speak for yourself, racing second, followed by Flamingo Chick and down toward the inside. That's Valiant Reason with a good spot now. Way Waltz off the rail. On the far outside, that is Demelza trying to move up there three wide. Then comes Wee Bonnie Lass, telling me softly, running tie begins to try to pick it up from the back, and the trailer is now Lumamba. Half 47 and four as they make their way into the turn. Lost scroll has opened up three and a half lengths on the field. Valiant Reason now chasing second, going after that one, followed by Flaming Go Chick on the inside. Up on the outside, Way Waltz trying to get underway. Behind horses running tied with nowhere to go, looking for room. Lost scroll right now, trying to wire the field. But here comes on the outside. It's Valiant Reason making a race of it. They went the six furlongs in 13 and three. Lost scroll trying to fend off Valiant Reason. Valiant Reason seemed to have dead aim on the outside. Lost scroll is trying to battle back. It's those two to the wire. Lost scroll and Valiant Reason. Valiant Reason on the outside. Sticks ahead in front, and Valiant Reason will prevail. Lost Scroll getting Got the late money and proved wise. Trying the turf for the first time. The 11 Valiant Reason for trainer Michael Matz gets it done with apprentice jockey Johan Rosado. Five even, 343 even. The two just ran too good a race to lose. You know how they say that sometimes. I remember giving that out before the race there. You should watch the two horse there. You look at the comment line. I love to look at the comment lines in turf races. Of course, horses can get in all sorts of trouble. You know, unless you go watch the replay of the race, you're not quite sure. Last time this horse ran on the turf at Pimlico, and it was in contention down the lane, checked inside eighth pole, which means this horse was right there and had to check, probably lost all chance, and still only lost by uh, a few lengths in that race there. So you, you always want to check when you see that. And I thought he would improve dramatically this time out of 40 to one. He almost got all the marbles there, 19, 20, and 15 even for the second spot there. And third was the five, another bomber at 50 to one to complete the try, Wee Bonnie Lass. Exact 11 to 2, 105, 20, 11 to 5 on the try, 1,884, 40. 611 double, $24. Dollar pick three, just over 40 bucks. And your super factor in that race with the one, not one finishing fourth. If you just key the one all day long, you probably make money. $3,254.90. We move on to race number six on the card. This is a nice claiming race here, going six furlongs. In here, you can scratch the one. Left us with a field of eight, and the uh, Parks Invader Seven Unbridled Gift was bet down to nine to five. We'll go off as the post time favorite. And they're off. Unbridled Gift toward the outside, joined by Prudhoe Bay and Annie Court in a storm, quickly up there to vie for that lead. Down to the inside, that's Looks Good Racing in fourth, followed by Un Paso Alante. On the outside, Connemara Coast, four across the track there. Negrito is there amongst that group, and Sky Chaparral moves up with the rail. Unbridled Gift leads him down the backside by three parts over any court in a storm. Then a little bit further back to Looks Good, who's a close-up third now, followed by Connemara Coast and Prudhoe Bay. A gap of three lengths to Negrito on the outside of Sky Chaparral. 
and Unpaso Alante is at the back. Into the bend they go with Unbridled Gift by a half. Looks good now applying some pressure toward the inside. Still hanging in there. Any court in the storm. Two lengths further back to Connemara Coast. Then a gap of three more to Prudhoe Bay and Negrito. Around the bend they race. Looks good. Now set the challenge for that lead. Unbridled Gift is there down toward the inside. Trying to slip on through. Any court in the storm. Three with a shot it appears as they head down the lane. Unbridled Gift is trying to battle back. Looks good on the outside. Down along the inside, any court in the storm is trying to slip on through. Here comes any court in the storm. Unbridled gift and looks good. Those three across the track. It's a three-way thriller, but riding the rail to victory. Any court in the storm. But Charlestown and Vader, we had one earlier that ran a pretty good race there for the same connections. Trainer Joan Reynolds, who I mentioned, had a 25% win rate there. So, you know, these horses are coming in here, and they can get the job done. Wesley Ho with a nice ride. Riding the rail, 13-20, Second was the favorite, the seven unbridled gift, 380 and 280. And third was the three, looks good, 660. Exact to 48.40. The try, 473, 311 even. The double, 55.60. Dollar pick three, $46.20. And the Superfecta with the eight returned 693.70. 70. Forgot to mention, we had a claim in that race. Jamie Ness claimed the seven unbridled gift. And I believe we had a claim earlier on the card I probably forgot to mention. And we did in race number four. The one burn control was taken by uh, Pecorero Racing Stable trainer Anthony Pecorero. That was back in race number four. Keeping you up to date on today's claims. Now let's move on to race number seven. This one's on the turf at about a mile and 70 yards. In here, you can scratch the four, the 10, along with the 12 and 13, left us with a nine horse field. And in here, well, you can see that we're vying for favoritism, co-favorites, the six, believe in angels, and the nine Nikki rocks for pops. We're set, and they're off. Gator girl toward the outside away well. Down toward the inside, it's Flatami Zanja and Shack up in between those as they race off the shoot toward the finish line the first time. Good solid tempo being set by Gator Girl. And right there is Shack up. A length and a half further back, the Flatami Zanja going along in third. Then a gap of about three lengths. And Nikki Rocks for Pops got in a good spot. Down on the inside, Ariel's Flyer saving ground. Up on the outside, Ten Penny Princess, followed by Critical Humor. Then comes Candy's Hideaway and Fox. Far back, Believe in Angels is way out of it. Almost 20 lengths off the lead now as they make their way around the first turn. Opening quarter in 23 seconds flat, so it's been a solid tempo with Gator Girl setting it. Shack up is right there in second, two lengths further back to Flatami Zanges in a good spot in third. Nikki rocks for Pops, a favorite, a length and a half further back in fourth. Then a gap of two and a half lengths to Tenpenny Princess. Critical Humor looks to move up between horses with the rail. That's the gray Ariel's Flyer. Five more to Candy's Hideaway and still Believe in Angels is lagging way back there today. Half went in 46 and two as they race into the turn with Gator Girl on the front end by almost two lengths. On the inside, Flatami Zanja. Shack up on the outside. Nikki rocks for Pop. About to make a three wide move. Then two lengths to Critical Humor trying to advance with. Next in line, that is Flatami Zanja as they turn for home. On the front end, Gator Girl. Toward the outside, Shack up. Nikki rocks for Pops. Down toward the inside, Flatami Zanja. And behind them, it's Critical Humor. Here comes Shack up and Nikki rocks for Pops. Down to the inside, it's Gator Girl. It is Shack up showing the way. Nikki rocks for Pops surging in the end. It's going to be Shack up holding off Nikki rocks for Pops. Well, Tight that's for the way they crossed the line, but a lot happened in that race. We had two claims of foul in two separate incidences. It was the nine against the five for interference in the stretch, and they reversed them, making the nine Nikki rocks for Pops first under Pablo Rodriguez for trainer Lynn Ashby and dropping the five to second. Uh, that was uh, Carlos Quinones on the five there who was DQ from first to second. Also, the third place finisher across the line, Gator Girl, was taken down for interfering with the three in the stretch run. So two separate incidences and a double disqualification. Don't see that very often there, but we had a new order finish, nine, five, seven, and three as the eight was taken off third and placed fifth. 9.5 exact of $56. Your try, 9.5 and 7 return, 388.20. The double, 4.9, $89.40. Your dollar pick three returns just over $90. And the superfecta there with the three, $1,110. And the dollar pick five was hit today, over $739 for all five out of five. We also had a claim in that race, and the six who 
really didn't pick up his legs. He was way back. He was 25 months behind down the backstretch. I'm not sure what happened to him. But anyhow, the six was claimed by owner trainer Wayne Potts. That was Believe in Angels taking off the Augustan stable there. We'll see how that one came out of that race there. Not quite sure how that one will do next time out. Let's move on to race number eight on the card. This one is a sprint, a nice little allowance race in here. Optional claimer going six furlongs for three-year-olds and up. We had a couple vying for favoritism, but at the very end, at the, at the, they were loading the gate there. The two was even money, and the three was like nine to five. At the very end, the two got dumped on pretty big. A lot of money went down on where she told me to go. Dropped quickly down to one to five, the last jump. Let's watch and see how that one turns out. In, we're about set. In there, off. Got about four across the track, vying for that early lead. Flash attack is there, where she told me to go. Wildcat Pleasure's up on the outside. That's Delta Outlaw. Those four across the track, heads apart as they move down the backstretch. Now, where she told me to go to the front by a half over Flash Attack and Delta Outlaw. Wildcat Pleasures has dropped back just a bit in fourth and a gap of four lengths further back to Dreamliner and Poppy's two-step. Opening quarter went in 22 and one as they race into the turn. The favorite, where she told me to go, leads it by about a length and a quarter. Flash Attack racing second with Delta Outlaw run alongside in third. Now it's five lengths to Wildcat Pleasures, Poppy's two-step and Dreamliner. As they race around the bend, where she told me to go, Still leads it by a clear length, length and a half over Flash Attack and Delta Outlaw. Seven lengths further back to Poppy's two-step as they turn for home with Wildcat, where she told me to go, in front now, opening up four lengths on Flash Attack, followed by Delta Outlaw. Not much is changing down the lane. It's all where she told me to go. And Jeremy Rose romp into victory here. She's back on form now, where she told me to go, opens up by seven or eight, flash attack, second, followed by Delta Outlaw and Poppy's two steps. And there's a nice performance, where she told me to go. Anthony Pecker has a nice one here. This one has run some really good races. Last three races haven't been all that good. Uh, going to Mount 16th on the turf there. And in the last three races, actually, Mammoth, Charlestown, and Aqueduct. But boy, this one can run. Look at the fractions there. 108 and three, the final time. That is rolling. Jeremy Rose aboard for Anthony Pecorero. And where she told me to go, does it? 260, 210, 210. Second three, Flash Attack. Three even, 210 with Kai Barcoa. Third, the five, Delta Outlaw with Carol Cedeno in the saddle there. Very impressive performance indeed for the Black Cloud Stables. Where she told me to go, this is a definite stakes horse down the road. And he actually has performed okay. Won the first state dash here at Delaware Park last year. And had a big win at Gulfstream Park in a state bred race down there for... Uh, Restricted races there, but uh, this horse has the capability of coming up big down the road. 580, the winning 2 3 exacted. The 2 3 5 try, $9 and change. Your double comes back $11 even. Pick three for $1, $51 and change. And uh, the super effective with a 6 over 15, and that dollar late pick for $112. We've got one to go, and the Belmont Stakes coming up. The ninth race is for Arabian Maidens going five and a half furlongs. In here, scratch the one. We had a field of five going postward, and the first time starter, the four Crimson Mary, was bet down to three to five favoritism for Ernesto Torres, who had a big meet here last year with the Arabians. Let's see how that one fares. In there, off. Down to the inside, Fortesa being urged for that lead, and we'll get it. Fortesa to the front by a length and a half. Crimson Mary racing in the second, followed by. Up on the outside, Omega, down toward the inside on the move. That is Foxy Roxy, and your trailer is a real diva. As a speed past the half-mile marker, Fortesa leads it by three over Crimson Mary. Nothing further back, a real diva moves up on the inside, followed by up on the outside, that's Foxy Roxy, and Omega is now at the back. Three-eighths to go, and Fortesa to catch, has it by four lengths. A real diva on the inside, Crimson Mare on the outside. The favorites are uh, the first time starters are running second and third. Moving up on the outside, it's Foxy Roxy. Also, a Megatron rally from the back, but right now it's all Fortesa as they turn for home. Fortesa's opened up about six or seven on the field. They're battling for second right now. It's Fortesa in command, a furlong from home. It's Fortesa and Angel Suarez in front by about eight lengths. The battle is strictly for the balance. It's all Fortesa. On the outside, Fortesa here comes Omega. Fortesa in the nightcap here at Delaware Park and got out of the gate quickly and never looked back. This five-year-old mayor gets the win for trainer Simon Hobson and Angel Suarez gets his second of the day. Winner returns 
1040, 520, 280. Second was the 3 Foxy Roxy 423 20. Third of the 5, returning 380. Exacta 45, try 153. Pair of deuces in the double, 4560. Pick three, 33 dollars and change. And there was no super. And there was a Breeders' Cup bonus, a Raven Racing Breeders' Cup bonus to the first three finishers in the race. And they went to Dennis or Paulette Hughes in, finishing second and third. The Breeders, Eric and Randy Moreau Sipier, they received that bonus. Let's see, what was the handle today? Do we have it there? Today's handle for nine races. I guess you're coming back to me. Anyhow, $928,180 they handled today. Now that wraps up the Delaware.